Hello, it's Scott Manley here with some more advice for new Kerbal Space Program players. Now, a lot of people have asked me what mods I use, and well, it is a ginormous list, and I actually have a video about it, so stop asking. But a lot of the mods I use really aren't for newbies, and they're kind of pointless, they're silly. You don't really need an Eagle from Space 1999, although you might want it, but I don't think that most people need it. But I did want to put together a short list for mods that people should seriously look at when they first download the game, things that are really essential to have around. So the first one I would say at the top of my list is the Laser Docking Camera by Romfader, who is of course now a Kerbal Space Program developer. This very simple item replaces all the docking ports in the game with a specialist item that includes a camera. So. When you're docking, you can turn on the camera and actually see whether your ports are aligned, and it'll also give you numbers and tell you how close you are. Therefore, it makes docking a whole lot easier. Number two in my list is the Crew Manifest plugin. Now, if you've ever built a complex spacecraft with more than one command pod, the ability to add and remove Kerbals from your launched vehicles is really important. When it's sitting on the pad near enough the space center, you can move Kerbals uh, in or out. You can add them to your, your various extraneous modules. Also, it means you can move Kerbals between the pods uh, while you're in space once you're docked. Finally, it lets you actually edit the kernels, their bravery and their stupidity, and of course, the badass flag. Third item on my list, uh, I would recommend Mechanical Jeb because Mechanical Jeb, especially the 2.0 version, now has the whole range of possibilities for how you use it. You can use it simply for the extra information windows, you can use it to generate the maneuver nodes and still fly the nodes manually, or you know, you can go all the way and have it do everything for you. I personally mainly confine myself to using the Smart ASS and occasionally the landing autopilot because landing can be very annoying and slow when you're running at four frames per second. So yeah, Mech Jeb, very strong recommendation for that. If you really are absolutely against autopilot, then take a look at Protractor. It is very useful for calculating the interplanetary tra transfer times. It will tell you how close you are and that will at least get the hardest part out of the way. So uh, item number four, is and the robotics pack, right? Which let includes a number of parts which you can, you know, will flex and will move. They will have a rotating part, and you know this vastly increases the number of items you can build with the the stock Kerbal Space Program. I think it adds a lot to the game, and it's really worth having. But the parts are a little floppy, and for number five, I would say Quantum Struts is a hellaciously useful item. Quantum struts basically are when you dock two spacecraft together they will create struts that you have between them. This is very very useful for stopping uh, spacecraft from flopping around when you apply force to the joints. I've also used it in conjunction with the robotics parts to hold things like variable geometry wings in place. So quantum struts, very useful thing to have. Number six on my list is Kerbal Alarm Clock. When you are managing a lot of missions and you have set up your launch windows, your transfer windows and everything else, it's really good to set up an alarm for that and go away and do other useful stuff and then it will tell you when you have to go and pay attention to a spacecraft to make sure that you hit its launch window. It is a great management item for complex space programs and that's why I'm making it number six. However, if you have a, a complex space program, then it's entirely likely that you are dealing with lots of items in orbit and trying to find the right one or target the right one can become a bit of a chore. And that's why I'd say the Haystack plugin is an essential item for most people. I will point out, however, that Harvester did make some uh, a dev blog which mentioned something with some of these features. So. You may see it in a future version, but until then, the Haystack plugin generates a little icon in the bottom left corner of the map, which lets you bring up the list of spacecraft, search them, filter them by type. You can then target them or switch to them, and it's as easy as that. It's great. Um, to help with building, number eight, I guess, on my list is the sub-assembly loader 
which adds a new icon to the building menu. You can now build part of a spacecraft and save it and later you can recall these saved parts and attach them to new spacecraft. It, it basically adds copy and paste to the vehicle editor with the option of actually saving the cut parts so that you can use them on multiple spacecraft. It makes building, um, you know, switching payloads around a whole lot easier. I cannot recommend this enough. Number nine on my list is the KSPX parts expansion and that's by Clara Lowry who is of course now a developer for Squad and therefore most of these parts will probably be making them their way into the final game. This adds basically a pile of new parts which uh, share the graphic, you know, the stylings, the design stylings of the rest of the parts but uh, it fills in a bunch of gaps adding you know, radial fuel tanks that are small adds shorter flatter RCS tanks two meter batteries you know just things that should be in the game and uh it looks good it also has a, a number of new pods which i really like including the panopticon which is a three-man observation dome the similar to the one on the on the space station and it had a one-man lander can which is worth looking at and so my final item is Perhaps one that I don't think everybody should have, but everybody should seriously consider looking at it. And it is Ferrum Aerospace Research Technology. What this does is it gets rid of the, the lousy, low-quality aerodynamics in the original game and replaces them with high-quality, awesome aerodynamics, which will probably tear your space planes apart. In some ways, it makes the game more difficult. In other ways, it makes it easier. But I think it is really worth considering. I honestly would say that it's better to have two separate installs of Kerbal Space Program, one with Ferrum and one without, because it does increase the complexity a little, but it opens up the game so much that I have to recommend it. And so there you go, that is my top 10 mods for Kerbal Space Program. Take a look at them all, if you don't have them, you probably want them. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.